Welcome to another edition of After the Whistle, where our monitor isn't on, but that's all good over here. But we here. I'm here. Todd's here. What, what, what's day today? I don't even know what camera to look at. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, I mean, I know we got this camera, but you want me to turn the monitor on, bro? Like, it's going to mess with me. I don't know where to look. <laughs> don't worry. It's going to get turned on in all a right, second. All right. Cool bro. beans. Cool beans. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it takes a second to get to me when you introduce us, so, you right, know. Right, 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 right. This is, this is why we all work as a team. We all work as a team. We got... <laughs> oh, you did? I did. Oh, damn. I don't know what happened. Oh, man. There's a, I'd be telling people there's a ghost in here somehow, yeah. somehow, man. But um, <laughs> that's funny. But, yeah. The ghost of Pennyworths? Eight. <laughs> <laughs> What was I thinking? Like, so, I, you know, I'd be, I'm always hanging out with my grandmother, <laughs> right? So I'm just like, like, people that still got their grandparents around, that's like a cool thing. I know you had, like, grandparents Bro, I was, and great-grandparents. Being so. the only child, I was fortunate. I say me being the only child, I was fortunate to have a great-great-grandmother, all my great-grandparents. Right, right, right. And right. my great-grand, my, 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 my great, yeah, all my great-grandparents and grandparents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so for me, I got my grandma, but... Like, my dad's parents, they died when I was real young. Like, Sorry to hear that. Like, Sorry. late 80s, early 90s. And then my, my mom's dad, he died, like, 2000, mid-2000s. But I got the chance to talk to him before that. That's dope. Yeah, so I got the chance to talk to him. You know, the Africa calls at, like, 4 in the morning. <laughs> I mean, time difference. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's it. So that's why I was like, yeah, so I was, like, randomly thinking about it. Like, you know, when you see people, like, with their grandparents and their great-grandparents, and then I saw somebody that got, like, three generations or, like, four generations of grandparents, like, still alive. It's like, and that's like, ooh, that's a, that's a big blessing right there. Like, before my grandmother very passed, Madeline spent a lot of time with her, and that was her Great, great grandmother. Right. So like, we got pictures with four generations and things like that. So yeah, I, I was blessed to just have them just being only one. But um, I would say though, when you're blessed to have all your grandparents, great grandparents, and things like that, it just teaches you about life because you watch them all go. Yeah. That's the that's the sucky part about it. But it's definitely a great time when you have them though. Yeah. But you and, just... and it's also hilarious with old people because <laughs> you talk about something else when once they get once they when you start certain age, when they like 70 and up, when they get to like 90 and up, man, just whatever, whatever's coming to their mouth, they're going to say whatever comes and to their mouth. And you can tell say. what kids been around like older people because yeah. they just have a carefree mentality. Right. You know, it's whatever. Yeah, Speak but, your mind freely as long as you ain't cussing nobody out. Right, right. Because anytime someone asks me, how's your grandma? I'm like, you know, my grandma, my grandma's a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout, Shout out, out to my grandma. Both my grandmothers. Okay. Yeah, that's why I got left, I think. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, a lot. Got a grandfather, my mom, mother's real father of okay. Virginia. So I got a couple grandparents still yeah, going. They're still there. Yeah. That's, that's a blessing right there. Mm -hmm. uh, man, UConn. UConn was blessed with another back to back ch championship. Man, these guys, when you just look overall at the landscape of this entire season, they've been the best team all year. You know, they had like that little mid-season point where they lost a few games it was just like yeah but then when you look at their margin of victories every game and then their margin of victories in the tournament where I think it was like 13 points or something like that each game and it was just like each game the second half they just went up another notch and it was just that's just a well oiled machine team right there losing three guys to the to the league too and then you bring in a freshman who's probably who might be going to the league and with all the key pieces around there, I was like, man, that's just a well, that was a well-built team. And I knew what Purdue was doing in that first half wasn't sustainable. Cause. Well, you know, overall, they, they've been the best team for the past two years. Yeah. So um, Purdue had a great run. I'm glad E.D. made the national championship. I'm glad he actually produced. But we knew what was going to happen. Yeah. They were going to try to rely on E.D. And teams are just too good, especially a UConn team. They have, they have too many. For one, they have more than one big man. Yeah. Which allowed them, you know what I mean, to make it tough for Edie. Granted, he had like, what, 38, 40? Uh, 37. 37, like 15 or 12 or something like that? Um, 37 and 10. All right, 37 and 10. He did his thing, but he could have had 50. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. they made it hard for him, and then at some point in the second half, he kind of was like, he kind of, 
I, I don't say he quit, but I think he was kind of fed up with how it was going because it's like, yo, I'm doing all this. Can you guys knock some things down for me? Yeah, yeah. And because, yeah, they were going to him early because he started off hot. I think he, like, scored, like, the first, like, like he scored 16 out of, like, their first, like, 23 or 30 points. But then you could just kind of tell because UConn, they was just, like, they were, they were fine with it. Like, they never panicked. They just was like, fine, you can score all you want. And then at some point, he just got tired. He got One, he got tired. And two, they couldn't keep up because the tournament's all about the guard play. And UConn's guard started to really take control of that game, like, midway through that first half. And, too, uh, I remember my coach Polanski, my freshman year, shout out to Coach Polanski, um, he said it against Anne Maria, one of these bad teams we played against, like, they can't, they won't make more twos than we make threes. Right. So I feel like UConn, Hurley's mindset was, yo, ZD can make all the twos he wants because mm -hmm. we're going to hit, we knock a bunch of threes down right. and get in transition. So, you know what I mean? Like, three, threes are way more than two. Three, so. Definitely. <laughs> and, and, and the rotation, too, like, the rotation was because I think Clint, the Donovan got in a little foul trouble early, but um, the dude, um, I think it was Johnson, that, that filled in for him and a couple other guys. A lot smaller, but Edie was sad. They was having trouble getting the ball to Edie when, when, Clint, when Donovan went on the bench with, with those other guys getting to him. So it's like by the time he got the ball, he was working so hard just to get the, in the right position to get the ball. Like he, those hook shots that he was making earlier, you see they're flat. They hit in the back of the back. They hit in the back of the rim. They just not there. And then, and then any run you any run Purdue had, UConn just had an answer for it. And then like, they ran their offense so well. It's like they used up most of shot clock, and they got whatever they wanted. Yeah, that that was an offense all year. You know, move it around, get at least five to six passes, right. two to three screen, screens each possession, just to wear the guys down. And yeah. then they're so efficient. Yeah. That it's just, it's just tough to beat a UConn team like that, and it, that's definitely a well-oiled machine. Like you, right. it seems like they've been running offense for like five years. Right, right. Granted, they have some new guys in it, but you can just tell they hammer things home, and their guys have great IQ. Yeah, and when your when your starters only provide you, I'm counting right here. By the way, that's like 40 something points. Purdue starters only per score about 40 something points, and two and double figures and then you get two points from your bench while UConn got 11 from their bench. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, not 11, 13 from their bench. Let's be uh, real. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like, I, I, lo I love how you're, you know, you're, you're reading the stats, you're wasting some time, but who actually believed Purdue was going to beat UConn? Purdue. <laughs> I don't even think that whole team thought they was going to win. <laughs> Because if they I did, they would have performed better than that. Especially their guards. Cause the that, rope, I mean, come on, bro. They was, they was non-existent. You said, the, you said the starters, did you exclude Edie or did you include Edie? Uh, excluding Edie? Because <laughs> you said 40-some points. The man had like 37. <laughs> excluding, excluding Edie, they, they had 21, the other, the other um, starters. You mean four other guys had a combined 21 points? Yes, sir. In the biggest game of their career? I mean, my, my bad. Biggest game of their life so far? Yeah. <laughs> that don't yeah. even divide evenly. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think when we just look at everything, it's just like, yeah, you, you, man. You know, you know when you divide, you know. 24 by 4, it's, it's 6. 21 for 4 people? 21, and the highest was 12 points by Smith, but he took 12 shots to get those 12 points. So Edie had 37. Yes. Homeboy had 12. Yep. Then the other two had 9. And one didn't score at all. One put up a big old donut. 0 for 5 from the year. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, Tristan Newton, he went from being not even recruited, not even ranked at all coming out of high school. Now he's back-to-back -back most outstanding players. I don't know if there's been a player that's one back-to-back -back most outstanding player that I can think of because we haven't had I don't maybe think... Joakim Noah. No, because I, I think Corey Brewer won it one. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah, yeah. They didn't, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they've ever had that. Unless yeah. Christian Leighton, huh? The back-to-back -back Duke, yeah. Uh, you're right. Let's. I'll look, I'll look at and that. He was all world. Yeah. <laughs> so, but they had Grant Hill in early. So yeah. like, you don't really know like who was 
and, I, and we were young too, so we wasn't really following right, basketball right. that much. Right, right, you know right, right. I mean? Yeah, but but this guy, like his game, because he didn't start at he didn't start off at UConn, right? I thought he did. Did he? I thought he was at UConn this whole time. Oh, oh. Well, I could be wrong. Yeah, because I think I think he was at East Carolina beforehand. He might, he might. Be, I don't know. Uh, let me let me look that up. But it, yeah, he was at East. He, okay. Yeah, he was at East Carolina before he got to UConn. But th- this just shows you like just how irrelevant. They, I mean, players say it all the time how irrelevant rankings and like all this other stuff are because if you could play, you could play. And this this is just a testament of that. Like now he's a two time MOP, two time national title. With zero stars coming out of high school, and all it was was just work and you know just staying at it. Sometimes it's where you're from, El who you pa- haven't played in front of. Oh yeah, you from El Paso. Yeah, dude's from New Mexico. Oh, Texas, my best man. That's in New Mexico. I mean, it's, right, it's right there. But um, yeah, he's, he's damn near from Mexico. But um, yeah, man, he's from Texas, which is a hub. That's a basketball hub, and you can easily get. I want to say, um, what's what I'm looking for? Get lost, right? Because there's so many plays that come out of Texas, yeah. and um, six five, like you have to get a man a chance. Don't have to, but like, I don't understand how you could overlook somebody a six five point guy. Yeah. I, I just don't understand that. Right. But once again, coming from Texas, he probably got overshadowed by a bunch of guys, mm-hmm. and then had to go make his way. But like six five point guys, but come on. Yeah, that, and he's like, he's very like. Matter of fact, with what he does on the court, like he's he's not rushing. You can't rush him. You you can't put nobody like a uh, you can't put somebody on him like because he'll like he'll slow dribble it and wear you down that way. And he'll always find he uh, it just seems like he always found his his shot and always found the right guy. And too, he's not that athletic, mm-hmm. so that might also why he might have flew under the radar. Yeah. Six five, you expect him to jump out the gym. He yeah. kind of like. Yeah, he, 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 he's, he's a solid point guy. Yeah. He just happens to be 6'5", but doesn't really do anything like extraordinary. Mm-hmm. So that might have been why he might have been overlooked. All right, I got a list here of players that won multiple M- MOPs. So we are going way back. We're going to start. So bear with me, people. We're going to start off 1945-1946, Bob Kirkland, Kirkland from okay. Oklahoma a and I'm probably Oklahoma State now. Alex Groza, 1948 and 1949 from Kentucky. And then we will keep going. Jerry Lucas, Ohio State, 1960 and 1961. In our lifetime at all? Uh, it is in our lifetime. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm good, but Lou Alcindor won it three years in a row, Kareem. He, he he got it three years in a row with rifle. You mean he? Bro, yeah, he's like he, this. They, yeah. they consider him like the greatest like basketball player. Yeah, of all time from like high school to yeah, the pros because his think. his winning percentage was crazy. Right, right. Uh, Bill Walton did it seventy two and seventy three, and then we and then the next one was it until no. Oh, so uh, so it might have been Leitner. Yeah, so it, for it was Leitner and Bob Hurley. So Leitner oh, okay. in ninety one and Hurley in ninety two. All right. And and yeah, that was that was that. And um yeah, that mid two that mid two thousand Florida team it was uh, Corey Brewer and Joe Kim Nola that won it. So a little history for y'all folks. We just gave y'all a history lesson. That's so, all. Uh uh and lastly this is the sixth national title for UConn in the in the last what, 29, 25, 26 years. Since nineteen ninety nine, this is six. That's more I, than I just remember Rip. Yeah. Playing that you know, playing national championship, me in front of the T V. I remember mm-hmm. that shot. Yeah, it was man. against Washington, right? Bro, I don't remember the team. You're doing too much. I just remember him. He's playing them Jays. I remember that. I think it was the 12s or the 13s. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely remember that year because it was like it was such a big thing. It was like a big thing just in this area for for them guys for them guys to go because I think it might have been the first like. Just the team in general uh, with a chance to win in a while. I'll be honest, I didn't really catch none of that. I was just he was one of the, he was one of the first sneaker kings. You know what I mean? One, <laughs> yeah. of, the, one of the first. Yeah. I mean, you know, Mike Bibby. Right. You know, right. a few others, but yeah. And then we, and then so in that span, uh, they've got more than they've got more titles than Kentucky. They've got more titles than North Carolina. They've got more titles than Duke. In that span, and, and, then, and then it just makes you wonder, like, it just makes you look at how a program in stores Connecticut, because, you know, you've been in Connecticut. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but people just marvel how you could get talented players to come to stores Connecticut <laughs> for four years and play, and it's just like, you build that resume, and it's like you're winning a title, like, every four years or so. Like, you, you're going to get those players. This is the Northeast version of Alabama, but basketball. Right. That's really it, because they don't have anything, so... 
The least you can do is keep you kind of float, and they got cool gear and stuff like that too. Right, so, right, like, right. And, the, and the uniforms are dope. I like the, I like the uniforms. That's what I mean. It's like, it's like a universal uniform. Right, 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 so. right, right, right. And then, and, and you know what the crazy thing is? Like, I think like, it was like three years ago. Dan Hurley said it. You guys. I think they lost the game. He's like, say, you, you guys better catch us now because it's about things about to start getting rolling. Also, too, they don't share no acronyms with anybody. Right. <laughs> like UFC in South Carolina, I seen a girl with the USC. I was like, no, 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 it need to be SC. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ain't no USC for South Carolina. Just right. things they're trying to change. And, right, 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 and right. UConn is just red U with the con. Right. <laughs> 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 and also, uh, this is big for Dan Hurley too. And now he's got multiple. His brother got multiple as a player. His dad got 26 as a head coach. So it's kind of like, yeah, the family Hurley, just a uh, family winning. Now he's feeling more familiar at the table. Right. But before he said he could sit at the table. Now, now he's more familiar. <laughs> Shoot, he, he got a three peat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. He got three feet. He got one over over Big Brother because mm -hmm. that yeah that'll be tough. But it's gonna be tough to do. But yeah, I'd, I'd like to see a three feet no, in college because there hasn't been one since that UCLA team. And too, I would love to see UConn do it just because everybody be lying saying the SEC is the best conference and all that. And it's oh. like, man, you lucky the ACC merged with the Big East or else Big East still be. About the ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, before we go to the women's side of March Madness, quickly, John Calipari, it's official. He's going to be the head coach at Arkansas. And I was reading this. Apparently, the one of, I think it was a donor or somebody from, he's very close with, like, some some big shot. That's part of, like, the... Excuse Arkansas and stuff like that. So that's kind of – so I was like, okay, that, that makes sense why they got him. And then they're saying, like, the folks at Kentucky were just tired of – we're just tired of it, tired of not making it far to the tournament, tired of the – they were tired of the one and duns. They were tired of not getting it. They won a national title, and they haven't had one in a while, so they were so just they tired of – But and, they don't care about helping kids yeah. get better opportunities. And, and he was and, tired of them too. I, I could I could totally understand Calipari be tired of the fans, but like this entitlement of fans being tired of a coach. Granted, you not know, the fans. oh the, the, the AD, AD and yeah, all them yeah, goofies. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, who so you gonna get better? Uh -huh. they, they bring those type of caliber of recruits in. Yeah, yeah. So so <clears throat> this was gonna be I, apparently this was gonna happen at, at eventually. If it didn't happen this year, it's gonna happen at some point. So he got Calipari got ahead of me and said. Um, but like my thing is these these. Paper pushes and, you know I mean, suit wearers always got opinions and stuff, but they'll never sit on the sideline and actually coach for a season or even have any idea what it takes to get players to come to your college. Because I'm sure if they show up in somebody's living room, ain't nobody going to Kentucky. <laughs> I guarantee that, bro, if they show up in somebody's living room, ain't nobody going there. Cal, if I walk in your living room, he got a resume, he got charisma, personality. Right. Which right. speaks, you know what I mean, which, yeah. which speaks volume for your school. But I get it. But you should get, get a man another year or two yeah. because he had to adjust to what's going on in college. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and when you look at it, Arkansas is like not the worst of job because look, this this program was once like one of them programs that you know just because of the way they played in that in the mid in the early '90s, mid '90s, that hot that no one, step, yeah, no one yeah, yeah, but yo, my thing is, they just had like. Muscleman, I think that was. No, nah, I'm just saying the recruits they had like a couple years ago was right. they had like the five best recruits in the country. So and I think they were all from Arkansas. I think some of them or like three of them. Yeah, because Anthony Black, he from um, Texas. Mm -hmm. and, but anyways, they they had a crazy recruiting class not yeah. too long ago. So yeah. like you just letting Kyle probably go walk into that. Yeah, and also, and also in doing research, apparently like uh, the the founders of Walmart are. I think they're Arkansas alum, Hines. They're big. Uh, they're they're uh, Arkansas alum. So that NIL money, they got a lot. Then now they got a guy that knows how to utilize it because. First thing I'm doing, I'm yeah. doing a ketchup commercial. <laughs> if I'm Calipari. Them never go out of style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they have they have um, they have big donors That's in Arkansas. That's do. and oh and I think God. they were there. They're, they're one of them places that they, they want a national title. They'll do anything to get a national title. And I don't think they'll care that much after they win it if you got, like, top recruits coming to your school every year and you're right. getting them out and you're still bringing notoriety to the school. like. And you're getting attention to Arkansas because it's Arkansas. Oh, you're really talking about Arkansas like that. <laughs> 
But yeah, it's gonna be interesting. It's good. Interesting move, but you know he's gonna. And I'm probably, I'm pretty sure he's probably on some of those commit, committed Kentucky recruits are probably going are gonna go with him over there. So I'm just wondering who Kentucky gonna get that's even as enticing as Calipari's name. Yeah, just to because just you, you just you having Calipari just got people walking to the. I mean, wanting to go on campus. Yeah, wanting to look into the school itself. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. All right. Oh, South Carolina won their third national title in the last seven years. And once again, this was kind of almost similar to the UConn game. Close early, then South Carolina was just too big. It was just too big. They were trying to make it close. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They, them girls, were just, it, it was just too big. They wore them girls out. Cardoso. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, when you got a girl 6'8 that's grabbing, that's grabbing every rebound and giving your team a bunch of second chance possessions, it's going to wear on you. But yeah. shout out to Iowa, though. They're a lot better than I thought, just as players. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you play together for four years. You better be good by the fourth. So. I mean, that's how college basketball used to be. Yeah, it's supposed to be. That's how it used to be. The t uh, uh, team stays together for a while, and then. But you know, without no, click, without no Caitlin, they lose the second round. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just crazy how much a player could. Yeah, how much carry, one play? Yeah, almost one player can win a, a championship in women's, women's basketball because yeah. it's tough for men's. Yeah, yeah. And and also for, for those South Carolina girls, what's her name? Um, what was it? Raven Johnson. It was kind of like a redemption game for her. She ain't do that much offensively, but it was more so her defense because she got, she remembers getting waved off last year when she was wide open and they were them letting them shoot threes and then she put the clamps on. And she controlled the offense most of the game too. Yeah. She was a primary ball handler, making sure everything was... You know, I mean, cope aesthetic and balanced. But, yeah. um, yeah, man, shout out to her getting her get back. But, you know, I just don't like how they're trying to give, what's the name, the pity potty. And, oh, she still did this and still did that. Yeah, that's great and all. But, like, in our experience and our just viewing and watching girls basketball, the greats always win one. Yeah. You go down the list, they always win at least one. Yeah. So, you know, not, not, not taking anything away from her ability and all that stuff, but there's, there's just these levels of greatness. Because they don't talk about Kelsey Plum at all when it comes to being a great. Yeah, she needed to go 50 to, for them to even have a, to, to win that game. But, yeah, they, you just tell them, them girls got worn down. Mm -hmm. They got worn down. The physicality of South Carolina was just <laughs> way too much. And then now for South Carolina, the only thing now is, like, to discuss with this team is, like, where do they rank amongst, like, teams that went undefeated for a whole season. That's like the only, that's literally the only conversation that should that should be had, like where, you know, where you going uh, where you gonna rank them and stuff like that or where where's their place in amongst teams that's undefeated. That's the grand they, they probably won't be the number one they probably won't be in the top five, but <laughs> you're in the conversation. I put them at the bottom to I be mean, honest with you. But ain't nothing yeah, wrong with that. It's right. just <laughs> them girls ahead of y'all, they was some yeah, yeah. teams was different, bro. Yeah, and you just in the conversation. There ain't no yeah, wrong ain't with nothing wrong with being in the conversation. Cause that means you're a winner. Right. And a lot of them girls are what a lot of them girls, um, who, who who's the girl? One of the girls, she's I think it was like Johnson. She's been she's been like winning Tessa Johnson. I think she's been winning since like Probably. high school and stuff like that. I think she was, she was a four times national cha uh, four time champion in high school and stuff like That's that. That's dope. So but and, and too like a couple of them girls gonna go to the league. But I don't. You know this is this is their heyday. I feel yeah, like yeah. some of them, you know, the great basketball players, but some gonna be overseas. Yeah. Some just gonna just hang them up. Yeah, and the and the best story out of this was Camilla Cardoso, just from just her eventually ending her career as winning the most outstanding player of the tournament, and you know just her story leaving home, uh, leaving Brazil, leaving whole her whole country at like 15 to come up here, starting off at Syracuse and uh, coming up here. That's like, these are like the kind of stories that, that should be pushed and talk about. Just and, like, she, and her family got to see her play? For the first time. And she hit the game with her. <laughs> the first time her parents saw her play. And, and, and was she almost jacked some girl up too? Yeah. <laughs> the same game? <laughs> I don't know what part of Brazil she's from, but it seemed like she's from that part of Brazil. They don't mess around. Nope. <laughs> so, nope. And she's like 6'8". That is a very, very, very large woman. Big red. <laughs> All that red. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> one, thing, one thing I'm glad that this tournament's over, one thing I'm glad I don't have to hear about is how people just keep trying to pander and say nonsense about like, oh yeah, the women's tournament was more entertaining than the men's or people like 
proudly saying they didn't watch the men's March Madness. I had a, had a, call, I had a comment on someone's um, uh, Twitter. Like she wrote, like she's like asking, like, oh, how many? To be honest, how many of y'all tuned in to watch the men's Final Four and stuff like that? So I was just like, why can't y'all just enjoy both? You know what I'm saying? And they're just like, oh, you know, you come in here, maybe you should read the comments under my post. I'm like, why would I read that? You don't want that wrote this. Like, why would you, why, like, why, if you even got to ask that question, like, if you don't love basketball like that, just say you just watch the girls, that's it. Don't, you keep, everyone's just keep trying to compare it. Like, people that love basketball watched both and enjoyed both. And I will say this, I'm pretty sure there was no games on the girls' side that was better than the Creighton-Oregon game. Florida, Colorado game or the Texas and um, Houston game. I don't even think the girls even want to be compared like this. Like, right. who watches then watch that? Because then it's like, yo, you like you make it a spectacle. It should just be even. Right. Whatever you choose to watch, it shouldn't be no competition. And, but right. that's just girls entering the world that they have no no clue about. And because they've been watching ESPN and. America Today, is that what it's called? Good Morning America. Yeah, Good Morning America. <laughs> Good Morning America Today. Yeah, and all this stuff, now they want to be in tune. Right, right. It's all right. on social media, now they want to, they, they're hip and they know about some things. Just keep right. your comments to yourself and just enjoy the sport. Man. Right, that's what I was saying. Like, me and my cousin was talking about I'm like, Brad, what is wrong with you folks? Like, I thoroughly enjoyed both Marsh, both Marsh Madness now. I probably, I probably watched more games on the boys' side than the girls' side because the girls' side, you it ain't get interesting to like the elite eight. That's when it gets interesting because right. you gotta just funnel all the the girls that is, teams that is out there because they won the conference tournament. We all know the upper echelon. Right, you know who, who like competes. Everybody <laughs> know the final four was gonna be South Carolina, LSU, UConn. Whoever girls was ranked in the top five or top top ten was probably gonna be in it. On the men's side, and that's nobody the, had a clue. And that's the difference between. Girls basket, girls college basketball, men's college basketball. Men's college basketball is legit match madness. Right. <laughs> you have no clue who's gonna come out of these games. Cause we thought we was gonna see a whole different elite eight. And everybody's <laughs> dropping like flies. <laughs> so first weekend. Yeah, like so, you know, and that's what I said before, women don't play with their food. Men do. Right. So that's that's the entertaining part about match madness with the guys. You don't know who's gonna come out right. of these games, but with girls, you gotta just Wait till the lead eight. Yeah, final wait, wait till the best teams like meet up and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm just glad that. But one that thing I was gonna say about the comments, I almost comment on somebody's post and I realized not read the comments. There's no winning in right. writing a comment, bro. Right. It's always gonna be some idiot that has an issue with what you said, regardless of how right you are. Right. <laughs> Oh, I know. <laughs> like, it doesn't even matter. I read. I was like, these right, they're wrong. They're retarded. They're stupid. Like, you know what? Let me just not comment. Let me just keep doing what I do and just not comment at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> legit. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes no comment is the best comment. Just sometimes. You just Cause even if you want to say like, you guys all sound ridiculous. Well, you sound ridiculous commenting on this ridiculous. Story. Right. It's like, <laughs> man, if I could find you, I'd slap the dog out you, man. Hey, man. Like, that, <laughs> that, that, that was. I mean, that, that was me when I commented on something on the ESPN page about Josh Allen. <laughs> oh, man. And then what happened? Josh Allen lost, and none of them folks, were, I, I couldn't find them. They had nothing to say. And you know, I have no respect for the commenters with private profiles. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I have no respect for you at all, so. Yeah, stand, stand on it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go to Athletes Corner. You got the Lynn English boys basketball team. Oh, funny thing, remember to tell you about that? The coach uh, from Mellow? Yeah, remember oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That? He reached back out, and <laughs> he, now he, he really wants him now. Uh, he saw the film. He must have watched the film over. Uh, Why don't, don't these people just take a second, watch something. If you're unsure, put your phone down. Watch it again. If you're still unsure, go take a ride, get something to eat. Come back, yeah, watch yeah, it again. Yeah. Then respond. I don't understand why people are so quick to respond. Then they're like, oh, my bad. I meant to say this. How about you mean to put your damn phone down, <laughs> think, then respond? Right, right, right. I was like, yeah, I was just like, all right, cool. I mean, just, it just blows my mind. Yeah. I just I just blow my mind, bro. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, you know, we're trying to help all, we're trying to help all guys over here get to college because, you know, some of them are having... Some of them have enough talent to play at the next level. Like we, and we just trying to help them out. And unfortunately, some guys don't care enough to help their own players out. 
around the city. I'm not saying anybody in particular. Because <laughs> I don't know. But if Mook doing something, some of y'all need to do more. Hello and welcome to another edition of After the I said After the Whistle. Athletes Corner. We got the dogs in the house. Lit English Boys basketball team is here. He's my guys. They, uh, I don't know what y'all in store for for this interview, but we're gonna we're, we're gonna find a way. We're gonna find a way. But we got they gotta introduce themselves. Just say my name. Yeah, man. How else are you supposed to introduce yourself? Ian Green. Ian Height. Position. Kyle. Denzel. Marvin. Josh J5, the big drop. Pierre. Jose. Lewis. Carmelo. You Paul got, Will, you senior got... captain, number 10. <laughs> how are you going to talk when you got two mics? Oh, shit. <laughs> this is how this show's going. Coach, what's going on, man? How Finally, basketball season's completely over. Everything is done. Spring sports is here. So let's reflect on the season. Uh, this was a hell of a ride for you guys, that up and down seat, up and down ride these guys put you through. But entertaining season nonetheless, man. Just uh, when you sit back and you look at everything you guys accomplished, just how good do you feel about what these guys did? Entertaining, right? You see that with introductions. We saw that right now. We probably need to practice for that as well. But... Um, it's been a, it's been a, you know, it was a roller coaster of a year. Um, I'm super proud of our guys. How much we we've, we've grown. We've probably seen, you know, from highlighting just ever down twenty something with the, you know, our conference title on the line, yeah. coming back and winning that, <clears throat> winning the tough Cambridge down the road, down the, late in the season. Um, but you know, I'm proud of these guys, man. We it didn't end the way we wanted to. Um, we obviously made. We were on the other side of history of. <laughs> That 199 game at home. Um, we don't want to talk about that. You know, but, you know, overall, I tell you guys, it's bigger than basketball. And I'm always proud of them, and, and we're family, and they always know they can count on me for anything. Yeah, and it was also kind of a turnover because you gra graduated. You graduated guys, guys transferred, so a lot of guys had uh, new roles this season. Uh, just how you like the way everyone stepped up into the new roles that they had that they didn't have the, the year before. Yeah, I mean, they had to deal with a lot of a lot of talk that we you know graduated some key guys or transferred some key guys that we missed. But um, credit to all these guys, they stepped into roles where, yeah, we had a lot of seniors, but not a, probably had like two or three guys that had more yeah. significant minutes. Um, a lot of guys evolved in their role. Yeah. Um, even this kid right next to me, he evolved as a captain. He probably didn't take his warm up off last year, and he evolved into a captain role um, as a starter and. He, he evolved, you know, along with other guys that people, you know, never thought they would evolve in their roles. But we always have faith that with yeah. the hard work, they'll be able to, you know, shine in their role. Yeah, definitely. Speaking of Paul Will, you had one of the biggest highlights of the season with that steal against Everett. Man, that game, that, that was just a wild game in general for those that weren't there because... <laughs> It looked it looked bad. It looked bad. I'm I'm at the top just talking trash about my guys. How they ain't come ready to play. It looked bad. And then a flip switch. You guys came back in that in that moment. You needed that big play. Just how was that? You know that was kind of like one of the highlights of the season for you guys. Just that game in general. Yeah, like I said in the um the interview, I feel like it was just personal from the beginning. We came out though like. Um, we kind of underestimated them, like, because they, like, really, like, had a lot of confidence going into that game. And, like, they kind of, like, they were at their home court. Yeah. They had already beat us at our home court, and then they, like, they jumped on us early. They hit a lot of big shots, and then, obviously, their best player was, like, he was dominating that game. But we took him out the game, and then, you know, like, we got the job done. What was the difference? What was switched? Uh, I think it was just, like, a sense of urgency. I think that's one thing that was, like, we really, like, like had struggles with throughout the season, but that game, like we really like locked in. Yeah. No, another game, the Cambridge game. That was another game, you guys. That yeah. came down to the wire. You got back and forth game because the, always the talk is you guys can't beat teams outside the GBL or you guys can't compete with teams outside the GBL. But that mm -hmm. game also showed that you guys can't compete with anybody. And just um, how was that? Just you guys having an understanding of you were down late in the game and then. Mm -hmm. Like score, you guys scored like 11 straight points to win that game. I mean, that game again, it was just, it came down to our defense, but then the offense, like KB, like he carried us on that end. 
for that game. Like, we really got to give that one to him. Like, he took over. I think he had, like, 30 or something, and he hit the final shot, clutch free throws. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah 29. 29. He, had 29. 29. Yeah, yeah. he did have 30, but we don't want to talk about that 30. Uh, <laughs> Josh, my man Josh over here. First of all, congratulations for Framingham State. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, you also, another player. Coach has a coach always has big expectations for you uh, in your role on the team as just being a dog. But um, how was this season for you overall? Um, this season was a good season for me overall because um, at first, when the season first started, I really like was questioning if I wanted to play basketball again. But coach, I was like, nah, I'm not letting that happen. And he kind of just told me that he wasn't just like giving up on me. So I came back because I was kind of scared to like accept that like role as a leader and I was trying my best this season. Paul Wood did a good job at us being a captain. Yeah. And so I just tried to be a leader for them. There was bumps through the road and I just kind of just always came back and tried for them yeah. no matter what I was going through. Was this like the most vocal you've been on, on the team in your, in your years playing? Yeah, probably because years prior we had like captains like Tyrese and in my sophomore year, captain Jesse Maggs mm -hmm. goes to Endicott. Now he was a good captain. Yeah. But this year, Coach Al told me I had to be more vocal because when my energy's down, the whole team's energy's down, and that can mess things up. Yeah. All right, Denzel, my man. A lot of expectations for you. A lot of eyes were on you, man. Um, kind of up and down, up and down performance. At what point in, during late in that season did things really start going for you, start going well offensively for you? Um, I would say Coach Al told me more to, like, attack the rim and everything else would come to me and I just, you know, trust in him, listen to what he's talking about and it just flows good and trusting in my teammates and everything was just going how it was supposed to. I would say the beginning of the season I was really like forcing shots and mm. like settling and the more I attacked and everything else just came later on. Do you think your underrated part of your game was your defense? Because I don't think pe people just think of you as shooter. Very, very and underrated. You play, part. you play really good defense when needed to. You think that that's something people should actually highlight more? Yes, I do. I feel like, well, more defense. I do need to play more defense, but I feel like when it was really needed, I I really stepped up and and focus on that defensive part of the game when I knew other guys on the team would come through and all the other stuff that needed to be done. It's all that McDonald's you be eating. That's why <laughs> you got you to cut back. The the real MVP, KB. <laughs> don't don't argue with me about it. <laughs> don't argue. Or if you want to argue with me about it, you can. Uh, you saw you saw what was going on, man. Yeah. <laughs> you saw you saw the social media posts, man. I seen everything. Uh, what were your thoughts on on the commentary from from people that never even watched you guys play? You know, you know a lot of people. You know they hated on us this season. They didn't know what we've been through inside the gym and outside the gym, but. That was just all like talk on the outside. We didn't. We really tried blocking it out mm -hmm. and doing our own thing this season. Yeah. Uh, you were playing with a messed up foot the latter part of the season, man. How yeah. was how was that? Just being able to go out there, and not being a hundred percent, but you still were able to put up the numbers and still give your ch team a chance to win games. You know, even though like I wasn't a hundred, I still tried my best for my team, and you know I put a hundred percent on the floor every game for my team. Yeah. Coach, man, uh, yeah, just talk about him, Kyle, playing with one, playing damn near with one foot the late, the late part of the season and into the tournament, man. Just uh, how, how how proud are you just to I mean, play he would because he could have sat out yeah. if he wanted to. I mean, he's a lot, like a lot of these guys. They all they all come from a dif different cloth. They're, um, they're dogs. Um, Kyle, two years ago, I probably gave him a nickname of Kawhi Leonard because he does it all. He has big hands, it's probably why he misses some shots, because that's just what Ka Kawhi has as well. Yeah. well. But he has a knack for the ball from the state of the ball. He's probably one of the top offensive rebounding guards probably in the state, I would say. Right. Um, he's able to time that, and once he gets his mitts on those, it's probably you're not taking it from him. Yeah. Um, but there were just games where he just, probably all of our out of conference games, Charlestown put us on his back, Cambridge put us on his back, right? He. In those games, he he came became to play, and he yeah. really put us on his back. Even while he was, he had a, a foot I think Achilles problem that he those practices he wanted to practice, I had to sit him out. Yeah. Um, but he that's just who he is, um, and that's just collectively how each and every one of these guys have that in them. Um, 
And that's why when he says it takes it personal, it's because that's what I tell them that. Yeah. Um, they're kids and we're adults and we're coaches, right? And for adults to hate on kids, I don't think that's that's right. And they need to know that. Yeah. I, I'm very transparent with them, anyone in my program. I let them know um, to acknowledge and be aware of their feelings and don't be shy, you know, in expressing that yeah. um, in, a, in a respectful way. But um, I told them the disrespect is not good neither. Yeah, de definitely. Man, I ain't forget about you, Melo. We'll get the mic over there. Um, Lewis, Lewis had a, he was starting to break out. The best game of the year. Injury, injury happened, so, you know, he got to set out. But, you know, what did you see before that injury as That's he was funny. starting to hit that stride? Yeah, it's just it's very unfortunate. That was a rough day for Lennon's basketball just because he's coming off of his best game of the year, but he was already trending up. He had 25 that game, best game of the year. He carried us that day. We had a slow start, um, switched up the lineup a little bit that day. Um, he just carried us, put us on his back. I want to say he had like 11 in the first quarter. Um, and he's just a hard worker. He's a blue collar, hard working kid. All summer he was working out, running hills, stairs, everything to the point I tell Lewis sometimes to cut back a little bit, but that's kind of how I was, so I understand him. Um, it's unfortunate, um, but I know he's going to come back stronger than, you know, than he was before. And um, we definitely missed him the rest of the season. And we knew that because he was just a different spark. He was electric. Um, he'll jump in the passing lanes and get some big time dunks that'll get us going. Um, but he was a player that we definitely missed, definitely down the stretch. Let me pass the mic to Lou. Um, was it like just being out and not being able to play? And now you have to watch the game. And uh, did you pick up certain things that you know that's going to help you during your yeah, offseason like the, get back? Yeah, like the bad habits I had, and then watching how they play as a team, mm -hmm. telling them what they could do. Yeah. To win the game. Yeah, offensively, what was clicking for you during that that later that late, late stretch before before the injury? I mean, what what did you kind of figure out? Because this know. was this was your first year with significant varsity minutes, right? Mm -hmm. I say like driving in. Yeah. Don't matter if I get the foul or not. Nah, yeah, man. Use that use that length, Melo. Mr. Quiet over there. Uh, another one, kind of a slow start to the season for you, man. <laughs> you know? And and. Uh, you know, you, you got moved to the bench, came off as a sixth man. Your first game as a sixth man, I think you had like 21 against Lynn Classical. Was mm -hmm. that the first one? Yeah. Uh, was that you just you, you just taking that role and, you know, just trying to thrive in it and, and doing what the coaches needed you to do to come off and give the team a spark? Honestly, I feel like as a senior being here for three years, I feel like I should be more like helping the team out and stuff. And I feel like in the beginning, I wasn't really locked in. So coming off the bench, it gave me like – some type of motivation that I need to go harder. Mm -hmm. And that's what really, like, drove me to that point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> what would you say about your game that grew since, you know, your sophomore year, you wasn't shooting threes. You, you, wasn't, you wasn't shooting that many threes. Mm -hmm. You put the goggles on, you started making them, and then, like... <laughs> <You> <laughs> finally see. Right, and then, like, the next two years, you became an even better shooter. Uh, what, what did that take? Was that just a lot of off-season work, or you just found a way you, had, you just knew you had to expand your game? Honestly, I felt like I had to expand my game, and I put that work in off season, so it gave me the confidence to shoot it in game. Yeah, that's what happens when you run uh, when you run them stairs with us. I'm like this guy, <laughs> somebody ain't do it. <laughs> Paul, he was there, right? You, you was there. Did it? He was there. Marvin was there. Mm. Marvin was. You, you the only one that wasn't there, man. You were the only one. Uh, Paul, I know you had to address some things. Uh, this is your time to address whatever you needed to address. It's a kids-friendly oh, yeah. show, remember? Oh, okay, okay. It's a kid, kids-friendly show. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just feel like to everyone watching, like like my coach said, it's not cool to hate on kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all going back and forth. Like, I understand like people in the city like. You guys have your favorite teams, like the high schools that you probably went to. But, like, you know, at the end of the day, when it comes to that state tournament time or, like, the out-of-conference games, like, you got to just show love to everyone. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Right. All my guys here, like, we came out and supported. Like, we got friends from every single school. And I'm probably certain you guys did, too, when you were in high school. So you don't got to act like it's, like, animosity or anything. That's Stop being saying. weirdos is pretty much what he's yeah. saying. Stop <laughs> yeah. being weirdos. Especially... Yeah. I found out that somebody made a burner account <laughs> just, just to hate. Like, who who makes a burner account? That's some stuff they be doing in English. Just, like, just to just to come in. You know, every time I post something, they want to 
disagree and want to. Man, you weirdos. Uh, I can't forget about Pierre, man. Pierre. Yeah. I'll, I'll, what, speak, I'll speak what, for him. What a season for Pierre. <laughs> no, no, what a season for Pierre, man. He, I mean, if nobody knew about him, he I came did. out. He definitely came out of nowhere. He definitely, I mean, finished finished averaging a double double. Yeah. And yeah. made uh, made the biggest play in, at Everett, even against Cambridge. He was on the offensive glass. Uh, I mean, man, Mansfield. He was on the off, off Marshfield. I should say he was on the offensive glass a lot, man. Just what yeah. he said about his game and just his um, the step he took this season. Big time. I mean, before I get to before I get to Pierre, I just want to like show a lot of credit to uh, Josh Anderson's involvement. Um, he's been with me, with, like, with Melo, uh, Dens, anybody else, for the last three years. Um, and this year, as far talking about when he said expanding game, like what Melo said, he expanded that mid-range towards the later end of the season. That yeah. really opened up a lot of games for us. Yeah. Um, I told him all year that, um, first off, he said he wasn't playing. I said he had no choice. <laughs> um, he just kind of sugarcoated that. Um, <laughs> And he, he stepped up in the way that we needed. We knew that we were a positive team when he was in the game, rebounding-wise with the best of them. Um, he's our rim protector. He probably leads the league in technicals. Um, <laughs> but in charges. He in, in well, charges. Wallace, in Wallace, charges. Wallace. One highlight, like what he just said, highlight in Charlestown, he took four straight charges. And the only reason they didn't give him the fourth one was because he took three right away. And he had the fourth. They just didn't give it to him. He yeah. picked up his fourth foul. But Josh was our anchor all year. He was our anchor. When he wasn't in the game, it was real rough for us. When he was in that game, because of his energy, his enthusiasm, his dream on green mentality, which he likes to go by, yeah. um, he liked, you know, it affected us and helped us. So, you know, kudos to him. He really he, he had a hell of a senior year. So I want to give credit to him on that. Um, so good job, Josh. Thank you, um, Pierre. Pierre's a kid who <clears throat> he was on our JV last year. Uh, he's only been playing basketball for about two years. Okay. Um, he's an athlete. He's an athlete who just knows one speed where he just flies around. He's physical. He can probably lay up. He probably is probably our best finisher in traffic. Um, once he rebounds, he's able to push it in transitions, which makes it made us as faster as a team. Yeah. Um, and then he can guard multiple positions as well when he wanted to. Um, towards the beginning of the, beginning of the season, he was our best free throw shooter as well. Um, he's just a kid with a jack of all trades. He does a lot. He does a lot on the floor. And I told him in the summertime that by the end of next season, a lot of they're gonna know his name, right? And he kind of was like, "What are you talking about? Just put in the work." I'm like, "You, you, they're gonna know your name because we can see the potential." He's only been playing for about two years and. He definitely left his mark in that one year. I wish I had him for like two more years. I right. wish he was a sophomore, but <laughs> he had one hell of a year, GBL All Star, and you know when he's going, it's, it's yeah. he's very hard to stop. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Josh, Josh came a long way from like almost fighting on the court that first year in the Bulgarini tournament. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> I got the video. I got the video. I got the video. Um, seniors, what's next? Are y'all y'all try, still trying to figure things out? Uh, weighing your options. Start with you. Uh, I'm still weighing out my options, yep. you know, trying to figure things out. Having conversations? Here and there. Here and there, here and there. There's some interest. Like, with, like, co like basketball? I could, basketball, college in general, just, uh, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I mean, a lot right. of these kids, we've been, we do study all twice a week. Um, we have a no D policy, um, and that's it's a, to put that's them. That's a policy. It's to put them in a position when they're seniors to put them in the best spot. Um, and then eventually they got to make a decision, but my goal is always to make sure that our kids have options if they want to, right? College is not for everybody, but we're not just strictly talking about basketball all right, the time because right, right. at the end of the day, basketball is going to start bouncing, but we want to make sure that they have an opportunity after, yep. but then also being disciplined enough to put themselves in a spot to get one. Um, <clears throat> a lot of our seniors, with the exception of Josh, um, are still trying to weigh out all their options and see what they want to do. Uh, waiting on for the you know the college money, the financial aid packages for them to come through. Is that they're right. looking right or not? And you know I, I'm confident that <clears throat> no matter where they go, graduating our, from our program, that they're gonna have discipline from what they learn from our program, being good teammates, being on time, yep. all the times you ran. If if they're late, they know it. Hopefully that translates into the real world. Learn how to be a little leader. Learn how to take constructive criticism. Learn how to you know uh, perform under adversity. 
Um, that's what a couple of things that I tell them all the time that you being a part of our program, you're going to deal with all those things. Um, yes, you're going to get haters and all that stuff, but that's just life. You're going to get that. Um, and I double down on the Paul Wills message. I mean, we all from the same city. It's been pretty sad what, what I've seen here in the city. Not just us. I'm talking more in just general. Yeah. And I'm not trying to play victim here. I'm just saying in general, um, I miss those times when it's Lynn versus another town or another team, it's Lynn versus that, not yeah. versus Lynn Classical, Lynn English, Lynn Tech, St. Mary's, Kip, it's not none of that. And the divide that we've experienced as a basketball community this winter was very sad. Yeah. And it was mostly impacted by people that are not in it. And that's the disappointing part about it that I hope changes for the better of the city and the better for the most importantly the kids behind me. Yeah. These kids feel. These kids feel when y'all when y'all right. So you got to make sure that you're paying attention and thinking twice because I got kids of my own, and when your kids hurt, you hurt. Yeah. That's that's the diplomatic response. This is undiplomatic. <laughs> you weirdos. Stop being so damn weird. Stop hating. Stop hating, especially on these all guys. Love, man. All yeah, love. it's all love, but y'all y'all some haters. Y'all need to recognize, like I said, the real MVP's right behind me. <laughs> I ain't going to say no more. Coach. Appreciate you guys for Appreciate coming through. Paul Will had this guy in class. Had this guy in class. The rest of them were in the class for <laughs> other reasons. We, other reasons we won't talk about. You guys been watching athletes. That's all wanted McDonald's all the time. That's okay. <laughs> McDonald's. Yeah, McDonald's or Wendy's, man. Hey, <laughs> shout out to my coaches too, man. Yeah. This, do, this doesn't move without them. Definitely. Um, you know, as a head coach, you always, you know, you're the face, but this doesn't move without your assistant coaches and everyone around. So, shout out to my coaches. Yeah, definitely, man. Uh, we are out of here. I told y'all, these are my guys I got here. One more shout out. I just want to give a shout out to my guy Rashid. You know, East Side with Rashid. <laughs> <laughs> Riley, we out of yeah, here. Rashid. 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 <laughs> <laughs>
See, people, ain't nothing wrong with being wrong. And Wrap it up. He asked the question, I did the research. Yeah. That's how that's how things work, man. When you don't know something, you have somebody yeah, do the research man. just to confirm it. Uh, but her resume is her great resume, three net NCAA championship. Th- uh, three NCAA championships, 1990, 92, 2021. She reached the Final Four 13 times, 27 Pac-12 Conference regular season championships, 15 Pac-12 Conference tournament championships. She got four Big Ten regular season championships. Ooh, five-time National Coach of the Year, 11-time, 11-time Pac-10 Pac-12 Coach of the Year. In other words, a great career for her. Long enough. She's been coaching long enough. Time to enjoy you see how, her labor. You see how she said 11-time Pac-10 Coach of the Year? That just shows that you don't have to be giving people awards just because you feel like they deserve it because mm-hmm. the other person wins it too much. Like, we don't want to hear that. Right. <laughs> the best person deserves the award. That's just what it is. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And she and she put a lot of pros in, too. And some of the, some of the recruits she had. Fine. Fine, 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 fine. <laughs> I met one. She a reporter now. But <laughs> <laughs> Just like, there were a lot of nice-looking women to call basketball. Uh, uh, there is. So, what's well, she at? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, some NFL. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't break track. No, it's not because I met her. The one I met, like when I met her, she was she was done playing. Like, but she's a re, she was a reporter. She was a reporter for Golden State Warriors at that time. She does ESPN now, but yeah. There's a whole bunch of fine. Yeah. All yeah. Right. Yeah. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Quick NFL news: Josh Allen, not the quarterback, because there's two Josh Allens in the league. I don't know if you knew that. A defensive end for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Sucks he, to be him. <laughs> nah. He just got a new contract, a five-year, $150 million. 88 of that is guaranteed. He's a two-time pro, he's a two-time pro bowler for the Jaguars. Um, he had a career-high 17 and a half sacks. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was last year. That was his best season. So, yeah, kudos to him. Now, now you just got to win because the Jaguars were one of the more disappointing teams last year because coming off, like, winning winning a playoff game the year before, people thought they'd have good momentum, like, you know, be a better team and give some teams issues, but they just... I think they were the most backwards. disappointing team last year, bro. You see how they, they fell apart? Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, oh, oh, yeah, well, that team's always. I was gonna say the Chargers, but that they're the Chargers. Bro, but, yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. They got a Hall of Fame. They had a Hall of Fame yeah. running back that they could never win the big game for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. LD, they ain't on Thomas. Yeah, yeah. They, they, you go off from winning a winning a. Oh, LT. I mean, my bad. <laughs> you go off from winning a wild card playoff game after being down twenty nothing to coming back this season and not even making the pl- the playoffs. That's Definitely. And remember how their how their record was in the first half of the season. They were destined to be like a high seed in the playoffs. Right, right, right. And right. then just yeah, poo pooed the bed. Oh yeah, they started off. They started off seven and two. And, yeah, and that's why I said the most disappointing team this season. Yeah, and won three games after that. Oh, my land. Uh, two, two actually after. Yeah. Oh, gee, Louise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A damn shame, but hey. Now you got your money, y'all got to win. Y'all got to win now. We ain't got no boxing updates for y'all. Uh, NBA playoffs to start. I don't This last week of the season, I don't know. Only, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I tried to watch it, but I was I tried to watch some of the games. I'm like, yeah, some of these dudes are already tapped out and ready for the playoffs. I'll, I'll like, be honest, yeah. man. I feel like the, the NBA is just getting, like, too watered down, man. This dude's, t- like, this dude's acting like a dweeb with some of the rules he's implementing. Finding people for some unnecessary stuff. Like, you heard that, you heard that fine Wimby got for throwing the ball in the stands? Oh. <laughs> you know how much money he's, like you said? Come on, he didn't whip it nobody. He just tossed it in the stands, bro. Yeah, like, that might have been a price for somebody. Come on, stop being a dweeb, Silver, man. I mean, yeah. based on the physicals, Earthworm Jim, he man. can't avoid it. But you can make better decisions, man. Earthworm. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, Earthworm Jim over there. Okay, I mean, I ain't gonna throw, throw dishes at him, but hey, man. hey he, he look, he look like he a the, gym. He got the dweeb energy. I know that, and I don't like it. <laughs> oh man, uh, the only interesting aspect, the only, 
I can't even talk. <laughs> the only interesting part about this, uh, that, <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> This last stretch of the season is the Western Conference. Those three, those teams at the bottom trying to get, trying to um, that in play in whatever or trying to get into that sixth spot. Because right now, the Mavericks, Clippers, Thunder, Nuggets, and Timberwolves, they've clinched the first, they've already clinched. So those first five spots are, are locked in. But six, six, seven. It's been a flip. It's been like back and forth between the Pelicans and the Suns. The Suns been going. They've been their trajectory. They've been going backwards. Call out the season. The Pelicans. They kind of. They've been going this way. I'll be honest. I don't. I don't talk bad about many basketball plays, but that dude Eubanks is ass. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like nah. <laughs> um, Phoenix. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm-mm. Ain't that the dude that got beat up by um, yeah. <laughs> Stewart? Yeah. <laughs> and, and called the cops? Yes, and pressed charges. <laughs> he need to be banned from the league, man. <laughs> like. <laughs> and, and I respect all professional uh, athletes. You can say getting across the wall is tough, so I, playing at that level is even tougher, but like, <laughs> nah, he's bro. Oh my gosh. On that note, we gotta go. <laughs> Hey, man, we got, uh, so check out this again, this tournament championship game highlights from over the weekend, and then check out these top 10 plays from there, and then we're going to come back and wrap this thing up. <laughs> Lost my train of thought. <laughs>
back. Um, yeah, listen, I got to give a big shout out to the folks over at St. George's Greek Orthodox Church. Man, I had a great time at the Aguinness. <sighs> The uh, again, this basketball tournament that they do every year, they I love it. They they, they get me in, immersed with the Greek culture. So they, yeah. they, they especially with the Greek cuisine. So yeah, they, they be do. having me try to try some of the Greek the Greek food and all that. And I'm like, yeah, some of this stuff's good. Some of it's good. They still do the Greek festival. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. But you know, COVID kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they probably starting to do things again. Yeah, yeah, because I don't know if they've done it. Enough. I haven't but, seen it. Uh, yeah, because I don't see. I haven't time. seen all them parked cars in the comments. Yeah, I, you that, know. That's usually how I know. I just sneak into that joint. <laughs> <laughs> Keep those open. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, shout out to them, man. There's some great guys. Uh, shout out to the pastor over there as well. But yeah, they 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 enjoy it when we show up to um to film stuff. Oh yeah, and um met some met a few referees there. They watch. They watch. Oh, yeah. They, they. He said. He said he watched a majority of the high school basketball games I posted. So shout, I forgot. That's dope. I forgot the ref's name. Shout out shout to you, zebras, man. Yeah, man. But yeah, that's why I love Lynn, man. We got so many cultures and you get to learn a lot. Yeah. But, that's, yeah. but that's why it sucks when you leave, Lynn. When you get stuck in these other cities yeah. in the North Shore, it's like ain't nothing to eat. <laughs> ain't nothing out here, like. Right, like, ugh. like, yeah, man. Y'all don't want y'all don't want diversity up in this. No, I don't. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> but man, we 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 got we come to an end, man. We got we got to go. Um, all right, I think I'm gonna announce it next week. We got something coming up. It's gonna be in May, but we got something coming up. Probably gonna make the announcement next week. We are gonna make the announcement next week about it. Uh, so yeah, we'll make that announcement. We'll start posting it on our social media. But we've been trying to we've been trying to do get some things, a couple things straightened out, but. Time's, time's running, so we, we'll announce it next week on the show. So, yeah, yeah, check it out. Yeah, what he uh, said. Yeah, I'll tell him. Well, he already knows, but I, I got to remind him. He probably forgot. Um, yeah. Make sure you follow <laughs> LCTV after the whistle on Instagram. Follow that. Mr. Burn 23 on Instagram. Follow LynnTV.org. Go to the website. Uh, if you see me out and about, just say hi. I love, I love when some of y'all come and say hi when I'm out in the streets doing my thing. And, yeah. Pedro ain't have no boxing this week, but he's going to have boxing next week for you all. So, yeah, y'all didn't hear the voice in the, in the sky this week, so y'all will hear something next week. And, and yeah, we out of here. You, you off to, to a wedding oh, this week, Oh, yeah, right? my boy Kale, Kizzy getting married. You know, so it's going to be a great time. Great all right. time. All right. Shout out to him. Congratulations to him, too. We out of here.